stop making. Um, this is something that I just put, recently put together. Usually when I talk, I t just tell the thread the story, and I've been thinking a lot lately about, you know, not just Threadless itself, but what was going on in my mind that ended up um, creating what has happened here. <laughs> so uh, first, I'm going to give a little bit of background about what Threadless is for those of you who don't know the, all the backstory. But I started it 11 years ago while I was working a full-time job as a web developer and going to school part-time. And uh, it was just kind of a side project, like a fun thing to do. I was a member of this forum, like Mick was saying, uh, called Dreamless. And uh, I was just making stuff together with, with my friends. Um, they were, everybody was just posting artwork up on the forum and uh, sharing it with each other. And I thought it'd be really fun to have physical things from, from all these things we were making together. Uh, it actually started out both t-shirts and posters. Um, and it was just really fun to uh, print this stuff out and let people have it and share it. and. Uh, Started it with 500 bucks, and my co-founder put in 500 bucks too, so a thousand bucks. We spent about 200 of, of it on an accountant just to tell us that we can start a business as a sole proprietorship and run it through our social security number. And uh, the other 800 bucks was put into uh, printing our first batch of T-shirts, and we've been profitable ever since then, 11 years ago. The first two years. Uh, I didn't take a penny for myself. Every dollar that came in from, from t-shirt sales was used to make more t-shirts. Uh, and then two years after that, I quit my job and started doing freelance, basically building websites for clients. And Threadless was kind of proof that we knew how to build an e-commerce website, still a side project. So it took four years before we realized that Threadless is actually what we should be doing. <laughs> so we fired all of our clients and uh, Started, started doing it full time. We just came out with a book um, on our 10 year anniversary and I asked a few people that um, I really look up to to write little, uh, just a few paragraphs about what they think about Threadless. And this guy, Jeff Howe, who uh, coined the term crowdsourcing um, and it was about four years into our business that he came up with this term and it's now in the dictionary. Uh, he, he wrote this amazing piece in there. Um, he wrote about how he followed the Vans Warped Tour one year, and he saw all these kids there just making music and tattooing each other and poetry and, you know, like all these really creative people making things. And they weren't doing it because they wanted to become filmmakers or poets. They were doing it just because they loved to. And actually, I have a quote here from Jeff that um, really hit home to me when I was reading this. It says, uh, making stuff is the most joyful occupation in which we ever engage. It's the closest we come to God. And uh, I, start, I started thinking about it because I thought I was just screwing around in my, with my computer, you know, and having fun when I wasn't working. But really, I think that we all have this universal human need to make, and um, everything kind of starts there. Uh, some of the most greatest ideas out there that, uh, you know, are amazing things in the world that happen today started because somebody just had a passion for making something. If it's a really great restaurant here in the city. It probably started with uh, a guy who wanted to learn how to cook or, you know, uh, everything really starts with this joy of creation that I think most people have. This was another thing I realized. I, a lot of the, the ways that I've learned how to do things have been I'm kind of self-taught. I uh, learned how to, I learned HTML by clicking view source in, in the web browser and just click, like, reading how all this stuff works. And um, I learned Photoshop by downloading a legal copy and uh, <laughs> clicking every single button in Photoshop and just figuring out what they do. Uh, and you know, it, when I couldn't figure it out completely by myself, I would ask for help here and there, but uh, just that, that curiosity and kind of confidence to, to just dig into something and learn how to, how to do it on your own. Like, when I was 12, I built a tree fort by just nailing a board into the tree and stepping on that and nailing a board in that tree. Or in, <laughs> 
nailing a board next to them. You know, I wasn't a carpenter, but I built this three-story tall tree fort, and uh, it was really cool. It was kind of ugly, but um, <laughs> yeah, it was fun. Make yourself uncomfortable. This is something uh, I've been trying to do a lot of as a, as the company has been growing. Um, I kind of like stick my nose in things that I shouldn't be doing and <laughs> uh, learn how to do things as I go. Uh, like I'm, I'm really uncomfortable right now standing up here. <laughs> But uh, I learned a lot doing these things. I mean, it's just a lot of fun to get into these situations that you have to claw your way out of. You know, I, when I started Threadless 2, I um, didn't know how I was going to charge people's credit cards. And I didn't know how I was going to print t-shirts. Um, but I kind of had to figure that out as I go. Make unintended consequences. This is another thing I think that as you're, as you're making things in your life, you never know what's going to happen when you, when you do that, you know. Uh, I started Threadless as a hobby, and then it turned into this amazing thing. Um, you, you can never really uh, predict what's going to happen when, from, from your side project. If you start, just start doing something, messing around with it, and uh, who knows what's, what it's going to amount to. You can't make me. <laughs> uh, do it for yourself. I, I find uh, it's really important to have something that you do in your life that you're, you're good at. That, um, you know, a lot of, like in the culture today, a lot of people are kind of consuming things. You know, you're, you watch a lot of videos on the internet or watch a lot of TV, um, and, but you, you don't want to end your life with your kids saying, what, are my, what were my parents good at? And they say, he was really good at watching YouTube videos. <laughs> uh, you should have some, like, find a passion in your life and uh, go after it and, and um, do it for yourself and, you know, Learn something along the way as you go. Uh, make with your bare hands. Uh, Craig made this the other day. He does, makes all our videos. He's right there videotaping me right now. Uh, <laughs> but every once in a while, he comes down here and just makes something. Um, I went out in my backyard about three weeks ago, and I went to Home Depot and got some mortar, and I built a little fire pit in my backyard. And uh, I'm pretty sure it's illegal, but it was really fun to build. <laughs> And I've never mortared anything before in my life, but it was just, you know, when, when you do that, it really reminds you why you're here when you're, when you're out there and just making things. Um, I, you know, we, now we, the fire pit is really ugly, and, uh, but my family, we all sit around it and we roast marshmallows and uh, talk about the day. <laughs> so it's good. Uh, this is another thing that I've been trying to do a lot too, because I have a lot of ideas in my head and I never want to start on them because they're so overwhelming. Um, but if you just start sketching, like it can be a doodle or uh, build a prototype if, if you have an idea for a website or something, just make, design what the page is going to look like or just start sketching it. And I actually, the, the thing that I enjoy the most out of this is that it gets the bad ideas out of my head because once I start actually putting it to paper, you realize it's not really that great. <laughs> uh, but it's really important because, you know, you, you don't need a master plan when you... Say you want to start a company or write a song or... You don't have to have the whole thing envisioned in your head before you start working on it. Uh, just take that first step and make the first page or write the first line. Um, and that's how it all begins. And let, it, let it flow from there. Make something cool every day is something that a lot of our community, the Threadless community, has been doing lately. And uh, I'm really inspired by it. We, we do a, a family reunion here every year where uh, we invite three or so artists from our community to give talks to another few hundred people who come to listen to them. And uh, the last couple ones, have, people have flipped through their projects of things that they've made every day. And it is so unbelievably inspiring. Uh, my family, my wife and I are trying to do this with our kids every day now too. And it's not, we don't really post a, post up what we make, but maybe it's just we paint something every day, or, you know, we actually make something every day. It's a really good habit to get into, um, and it's a good challenge just to give yourself. Making with friends, this is a very important thing to me. Um, if you're an entrepreneur and you're looking for a co-founder, or say you're a musician, you're looking for the rest of your band, or you're, say you have an idea for like a children's book and you're a writer and you want to, you need to find an illustrator, whoever, whatever it is. Um, I think the best way to find those people is to start kind of making friends with people and making things with them. 
It doesn't have to be the the big thing. Like don't don't just meet somebody and start a company with them. First, make friends with somebody and um, and make things together. An example here: uh, my co-founder I met on uh, that forum, Dreamless, and he uh, messaged me and said, "Check out what I just figured out how to do in JavaScript. I can make the browser move." You know. And he made it, you click a button, and your whole browser window moves like 10 pixels over. <laughs> and so then I was like, wow, that's pretty cool. And I wrote a script that made the browser just move in circles. <laughs> and uh, then he wrote a script that made the browser move in a star. <laughs> that's how I met my co-founder, you know? We just were <laughs> just making things together. It's so important. That's how it all begins. It doesn't have to, you don't have to be so serious about everything. <laughs> Uh, make and make and make till you're dizzy. This is something that I've been trying to do because uh, I feel like once you get into a rhythm of making things, it kind of like fuels itself. Uh, I find that when I get excited about a project and I go home and I spend a late night on it, chances are the next day I'm going to be spending a late night on it again. And uh, so I try to just let it keep going. Um, and. Uh, the be yeah, the best fuel that you can ever have for making something is having made something the hour before or the day before. Uh, it really, really is a cycle. One thing that's really neat about the internet is all of us people who make things have a place to put them now. Uh, a lot of times, you know, it could be as simple as just having a Tumblr and posting everything you make, or it could be that you're using some of the services out there like Etsy to post what you make for sale, or Foodsy to sell food that you're, like bread that you want to bake at home because that's what you make is bread. You bake bread. <laughs> yeah. So there's all these cool things that you can do with your hobbies now that are uh, productive. It's not, you don't just, you can't, you don't have to just sit at home and make the thing and then let it collect dust in your basement. You can uh, get it out there in the world and see how the world reacts to it and let people um, take what you made and, and, uh, you know, take it to the next level or contact you about it and want to join you in this thing that you're making. Um, so try to do that as much as you can. Post on the internet. And lastly, yeah, I mean, the whole purpose of all this, I think that um, when, whenever you get into it, I think people just generally kind of can get into a rut or get too comfortable in their lives or um, things are kind of stagnant. And I think that the best way to get out of it is to actually like just start making things it's so it's so simple of a concept but i think it's, it's hard to hard for a lot of people to um to grasp or to realize how important it actually is uh it, it, it's not just fun it can actually become your life so that's that's all i got to say and uh oh also i just wanted to thank uh, the threadless community for making all these words that say make <laughs> Because it was pretty cool. We just posted up a blog on our site, and uh, our community actually wrote "Make Great Together" and like drew it drew it in a million different ways. Uh, what is "Make Great Together"? "Make Great Together" is our new slogan because uh, for a long time our uh, our slogan was "Nude No More," and uh, we realized that Threadless started because we we're just I just wanted to make cool things with my friends, and uh, "Make Great Together" is the perfect embodiment of that. Um, we all make things. We want to make sure that we're making great things, and we want to do it together. <laughs> um, I'd be happy to answer any questions, too. Yeah, uh... Oh, and afterwards, actually, we should do a conga line through the entire <laughs> office, because I'd love to show you guys our space here. It's pretty cool. But there's too many to do a tour where we can talk, so we might as well just do a single-file conga line. <laughs> we can all make a conga line together. I think that'll be our biggest tour we've ever given. Yeah. Um, so Jake, I, I like that you said even whether it's a tree fort or a fire pit, it started ugly. And in looking at some of the very first iterations of Threadless.com, it definitely isn't what it is now. Um, what kind of advice would you give to, I think that's a big fear for everyone, is we're such perfectionists that we want it to be good right away. How, how do you uh, solve maker's block and just get into jumping into things? Um. You got to be confident that you can figure it out as you go, and know that. Um, well, it's funny. I just thought of something that <laughs> reminds me of that. Like all these uh, paintings that you see on the wall in here. Um, whenever I watch Joe paint, it's amazing because he 
usually paints the background first and it looks like it's just going to turn out horrible. <laughs> but then once he does, fills in the outlines, it starts all coming together. And uh, I think that is a good analogy to a lot of the way, ways we do things. You start out with just these uh, blocks of ideas and they don't look that great, but you just keep adding to it until it becomes what you meant for it to be. How about you guys? Do you guys have questions for Jake? Uh, so the question is, uh, when you're making stuff with friends, how do you overcome creative differences? And, um, <laughs> um, you know, I think a lot of times what, what I do is we each go in our, our own iteration, kind of our own direction, and um, try not to, like, it's more of a, um, it's more of like, here's my version, and then here's your version, and let, let both progress alongside each other. Um, and then I think eventually it'll mesh back together. If that answers the question. <laughs> Anybody else? So uh, the question was that, um, you know, how, was my how, how did my experience change kind of over the, the last um, 11 years? And how do you jump in today when um, today is a lot different than yeah, 11 years ago, right? <laughs> uh, well, I don't really agree that it's any different to jump in today. I think you can still do it very uh, informally. Um, I think a lot of times people might uh, feel like they have to have something very formal um, in order to present it to the world, but uh, really I think you can start um, the same way I did. I mean, there's a, lot of form there's a lot of communities out there that you can become a part of and start something within that can then branch out to who knows what. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's been crazy over the past 11 years seeing it turned from a hobby to something that started to make sense to what it is today. Where we're selling millions of shirts every year, and there's 100 people in here working for Threadless. Uh, it's, it's been like a dream come true. <laughs> yep? So I've always heard, don't do business with friends. Are you saying the opposite now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like working with my friends. I mean, you spend, what, 60, 80% of your life, whatever percent you decide you want to spend, but uh, working, why not do, do something that you like to do with people that you like? <clears throat> yep. Uh, what are you guys doing around here in Threadless headquarters to so push this semester being great together? And are you doing anything internally here, Curtis? I mean, you were talking about things on the wall, but is there anything else that you guys are doing? <clears throat> Yeah, we've been experimenting with a lot of different things over the past year to try to get more of this spontaneity happening. And um, we've, we've had DIY days where the whole company kind of gets together and works on things. We haven't done one in a little while, but I thought that was pretty fun when we were doing it. Um, we may find a way to make that work but for us again. Um, but just generally in our work, we try to make sure that uh, everybody can add their own um, idea to a project as it goes. And, like one, one good example is we're working on a redesign of the entire website right now. And uh, when the art department hands it over to tech, uh, tech adds its flavor to it by uh, creating really cool little um, interactions with like jQuery animations uh, for rollovers and they add their flavor to it. And uh, it becomes this really collaborative, interesting process where we're all putting a little piece of ourselves into, into the projects. What was that? You're, you're constantly making stuff when you know that it's, you're going down the wrong path or that you, you know, how, do you, how do you decide when ideas are bad ideas if you're constantly? I think I get bored with ideas when they get too complicated. Um, when you're trying to work on it and you can't just find a simple solution, um, I just don't even want to bother with it anymore. <laughs> uh, a specific example of that, maybe I had this idea for this website called LifeCred that um, it's pretty, actually a pretty similar idea to the Facebook timeline, where it's like, why is your resume just your work? Why can't it be your whole life experience and have an easy way to just show somebody what you've done with your life, not just a resume? And um, I don't know, that, that got really complicated because <laughs> we're trying to think about how, how you can verify it, how you know you're not just lying about it, <laughs> all these different things, and it just 
became overwhelming and completely stopped thinking about it. What about some of the older Skinny Corp projects? Yeah, we've had a lot of uh, ideas. That, like we had a music site called 15 Megs of Fame. We had a pattern uh, pattern making site called Naked and Angry. We sell bumper stickers on the internet called I Park Like an Idiot. Uh, <laughs> We have all these little little side projects that really haven't um, gained traction, <laughs> and we've shut down quite a few of them, and, and some of them are still sitting out there. There's a forum called Yay Hooray that I started back in like 2001, and it's still on there. We don't really uh, do much with it, but it's still on the internet, and people are still talking with each other on there. Uh, yeah. Yep. Um, I like to find people that I trust to handle those things. <laughs> and uh, there's a lot of people out there that enjoy those, those parts of the business. And, uh, you know, you've got to find people who, who uh, as you grow, you know, early on when I couldn't just hire people because there wasn't money, um, <laughs> I actually was pretty uh, reckless with that. You know, like we didn't trademark Threadless probably for six years. <laughs> and... Uh, it didn't really matter. Like it doesn't really matter until it, it's big enough to matter for uh, for us. I mean, we we like to solve problems once they're problems, not before that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yep. Um, well, we set a pretty clear strategy of what we want to do as a company. Um, you know, we want, and everybody's working towards that goal. You know, we want to be the most, we want to be the largest community-based design company in the world, and we want to make amazing products. And uh, everybody is um, aligned towards that goal and working together towards it. Um, the people who run their departments have complete control over them. Um, That's cool. Yeah, everybody uh, does their thing. My favorite Threadless shirt is called uh, My Little Pony, <laughs> and it's this, it's this uh, woman holding her baby away in horror because she just stepped on a pony with her high heel, and it has uh, blood pouring out of the hole. And I accidentally wore that on the first day of my daughter's school <laughs> uh, this year <laughs> to meet all the other parents, and I'm standing there talking with people, and then I look down and I'm like, oops. <laughs> It actually turned in turned out to be a pretty good conversation starter. It was like <laughs> awkward parenting situations when you step on a pony. It's kind of similar to meeting parents that your kids go to school with. <laughs> Should we do this conga line? You lead it. <laughs> All right, let's go. All right, single file behind Jake, and uh, we'll see how this turns out.